Hello and welcome to our first lesson on Chapter 7, Enzyme Kinetics and Inhibition. In our previous chapter, we looked at some general characteristics of enzymes and their mechanisms, and we looked at the specific example of chymotrypsin. In this chapter, we want to see how we can measure an enzyme's efficiency and how we can regulate its activity. In this first lesson, we'll be looking at enzyme activity and rate equations. So overall, we want to develop a mathematical model that will allow us to quantify an enzyme's efficiency. In other words, how well is it, wor is it working? Just as in competitive athletics, we look at statistics to tell us who the better performer is, so we want to look at these enzyme statistics, as it were, to tell us who's the better performer in the cell. It can also tell us its role in the cell, and we may also learn how we can keep the enzyme from working if we need to regulate its activity. During the progress of a reaction, we'll find that substrate concentration will decrease and product concentration will increase, and this will be in a linear fashion. Here we have the example of triose phosphate isomerase. It catalyzes the conversion of glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate to dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So a simple case where we have one substrate and one product. If we follow the concentration of these over time, we find the substrate concentration does decrease in a linear way, and the product increases uh, within the same amount of time. Notice that the slopes of these curves are identical. One is decreasing and the other is increasing, but at the same rate, just as we would expect for one substrate, one product reaction. So if we develop a mathematical expression for that velocity, we see that the velocity of the reaction is equal to the rate of decrease of the concentration of substrate and the rate of the uh, increase in the concentration of the product. Now let's look at how that reaction velocity, that is how much product per unit time, will be formed depending on enzyme concentration. And again, it's a linear relationship. So if we have one enzyme working, we get a certain amount of product within a given period of time. If we have two enzymes working, then we'll get twice the product. Three enzymes, we get three times the product in the same amount of time. In other words, the more machines you have running, and they're all running at the same speed, the more product you will get within that period of time. So here's a a brief analogy here, we have the Ford factory in the picture at the bottom right. Of course, in this case, our machines are entirely manual, and they can only produce so many cars within a 24-hour period of time. But if we increase the number of machines, and of course, in this case, the machines are working a little better too, we get more product within that 24-hour period of time. So it's the same sense here. The more machines we have running, the more product we get per unit time. So we see that linear increase with reaction velocity. Now we want to ask the question, how does that velocity change as a function of substrate concentration? Of course, in this case, we're going to hold our enzyme concentration constant so that we're only varying one thing. And we have that graph illustrated at the top of the screen here. So our substrate concentration is increasing from left to right. And we see, as we follow the reaction velocity, that we get a hyperbolic plot. Hopefully, this looks pretty familiar. So what this means is that low substrate concentration we get a pretty steep slope, a rapid increase in velocity, but then it starts to level off and we reach some maximum value. At that point, our enzymes are saturated with substrate. That is, the substrate concentration is high enough that all of the enzymes are bound to substrate and making product. So we can't, no matter how much more substrate we add, we can't convert all of that to product in a given period of time. And it's simply because all of our machines are working and each is working at maximum capacity. So that represents our maximum velocity, our Vmax. So again, at that maximum velocity, all of our enzyme is bound to substrate. And so we have a simple reaction scheme illustrated here. Here's our enzyme. It binds its substrate. And we form the enzyme-substrate complex. Uh, note at this point, all we've 
do, uh, done is bind the substrate. No catalysis has occurred. That's our next step. That's our one-way arrow where we convert substrate to product and of course we regenerate the original form of our enzyme. So again at maximum velocity all of the machines are working at maximum speed. They're all bound to substrate and making product. As we develop our mathematical model, we're going to refer to some rate constants. And so let's just briefly review what we mean by rate constants. First of all, we consider a simple unimolecular reaction where we have one reactant A, and that gives us one product B. So if we were to develop a mathematical expression for that velocity, it's going to be the rate of the decrease of the concentration of A over time and that's going to be equal to some rate constant k. Remember k is a constant and a small k means the rate at which that happens and that will depend on the chemistry involved. But it also depends on the concentration of A. In other words we can't make any more B than we have of A. And so that's our expression for velocity. The rate is directly proportional to the amount of reactant and we say that this is a first order rate constant. That is it only depends on one reactant. But in a bimolecular reaction, we have substances A and B coming together to form C. And so now our velocity expression it could be determined either by the loss of the concentration of A over time or B, and those would be equivalent because of the stoichiometry of the reaction. 1A reacts with 1B. And that will be equal to the rate constant K. And again, that just depends on the rate at which that chemistry occurs. But now the velocity depends on the concentration of two reactants, A and B. And so we say it's a second order rate constant. Just a simple rule of thumb to help you determine the order of a rate constant. How many molecules have to bump into each other to make the reaction happen? So in our next video lesson, we're going to derive an expression that will reflect both the rate of an enzymatic reaction and the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate.